Procrastination. It's one of the biggest killers of productivity known to man and in this week's episode of my Productivity Mastery Series I'm going to go into detail about why we procrastinate and what we can do to overcome it. Now before we get into the depth of this particular episode what I really want to play is procrastination is not a bad thing on its own. Sometimes we do need to allow ourselves time to procrastinate because it allows our subconscious brain to come up with the solutions that are often required in order for us to move forward on a project. So sometimes if you've been working on a project all morning and you find that yourself are stuck with a problem you don't know how to proceed what you may find is that very act of going out for lunch, getting away from your desk, getting away from your work environment for an hour and then coming back, the solution quickly comes to you. And that's because your subconscious brain has had time to develop ideas. And this is why sometimes it's okay to allow yourself to read the news or go through your social media feeds so that you can allow your subconscious brain to actually come up with a solution when you are stuck. Now when procrastination is bad is when we are visiting our social media feeds, reading the news or chatting with our friends, doing pretty much everything that we shouldn't be doing uh, instead of doing what we should be doing and that is often when we've got a time pressure to get to work. So we've met up against a deadline, got a deadline at 5 o'clock this afternoon and at 3 p.m. in the afternoon you're reading the news. So that's when procrastination is a bad thing. But there are a few things that we can do to overcome procrastination. And the first one is, is that we need to start reducing our to-do lists. Now what I mean by that is I often see people with 20 to 30 tasks on their to-do list every single day. At the end of the day what they're doing is they're rescheduling at least half of those tasks. So really if you get realistic about this what you're finding is if you're rescheduling 10 of those tasks or 15 of those tasks every day then let's start getting a bit more realistic about your to-do list. What I've found after testing and testing and testing this over a number of years the best number of tasks to have on a daily task list is around about 10. Two objective tasks, eight focus tasks and you know over the last few weeks I've done a lot of work on my 2 plus 8 prioritization system. That is because it really does work and it helps to prevent procrastination because when your brain sees a to-do list with 30 tasks on it it's just gonna go oh no I do not want to start doing that let's have a look at our social media feeds. Not exactly what you want to do. But when your brain sees a list of things that are 10 items it's going to say okay then let's get started and it, it really does work. It gets you focused in on the work that needs to get done. 10 tasks, once you get down to 7 or 6 remaining tasks you're on the downwards rail. You're going to start really motoring and getting that work done maybe so you can finish a little bit earlier. Your brain is actually going to help you to get that work done. What's also with the 10 tasks is you're going to get a lot of distractions and you're going to get a lot of interruptions throughout the day so 10 tasks is actually a realistic number to have on your daily to-do list. The second thing is you're trying to do too much in one sitting. Now what I mean by this is if you allocate whole morning to write a sales report your brain again is going to start resisting. It's not going to want to do that. There's too much to do. What you need to do is break it down. So quite often if you've got like a sales report to do what I would suggest you do is you go into your project create sales report and start breaking it down into like 30 to 40 minute chunks. So you know how long it takes to collect all the data, you know how long it takes to start putting the data in and writing the words. So break it down into 20 to 40 minute tasks, maybe an hour if at the most on the outside but when your brain says okay this is only going to take me an hour let's get started. Again your brain is going to help you. It's not going to resist but when the, the, the amount of work that you've got written down is not clear how long it's going to take your brain is going to start resisting and you're going to start finding yourself procrastinating. And the next one and really it's the final one which is you're not sure what actually needs to be done. Now this is when you do not actually have a plan for the day. I see so many people who finish their work at the end of the day, they go home, they sit down at TV, they go back into work the next day and just do what they would describe as work. Now the problem here is, is that you've actually not got a plan so your brain is going to start thinking about things to do but your brain is going to go for the easy things, things like checking the news, checking the sales figures again for the fifth time today, 
checking the news, you know, social media news feeds, you know, all these things that your brain is going to want to do because it's not difficult. So if you start the day with a plan, you come in and on your desk is a plan or in your phone or on your computers to do this magic, you have a plan for the day, you are much less likely to start procrastinating. These sort of little things are great tricks that you can do to overcome the problem of procrastination. But like I said at the beginning, we must not forget that procrastination can actually be a blessing. It can actually help you to come up with solutions. And what you need to do is be able to understand what is the good procrastination and what is bad pro procrastination. Good procrastination is when you genuinely are stuck on a problem and you need a little bit of time to come up with a solution. And that time could just be like an hour, just go and have lunch and then come back and have a go at doing the project. You'll find that you probably have the solution once you come back after lunch. And so make sure that if you are finding yourself doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing because there are other more important things to do, then just stop and figure out what the problem is. Is it because there's an unclear outcome? Is it because you're trying to do too much in one sitting? Or is it because you actually have no plan at all to do and your brain is just searching for the easiest things to do? So when you do find yourself procrastinating, just take a moment to stop and say, hang on a minute, why am I not doing the work that I should be doing? Ask yourself that question and you might find that there is a simple solution. And once you identify what the reason is for your procrastination, then you can start working on solutions. Okay, I hopefully you found some useful information in this. And if you do find something useful, please click that like button as a way of a thank you. That would really help me. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Okay, thank you very much. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Thank you for watching this video. Now, if you want to take your productivity to a higher level, then get yourself enrolled in my 2019 edition of Your Digital Life 2.0 online. It is a complete, comprehensive productivity and time management course. And it's a course that will take you to levels of productivity you have only ever dreamt of before. It shows you how to build your very own COD system, collect, organize, and do. It shows you how to create the folder structure, how to build into your, your goals, into your daily to-do list. It has everything. And not only that, you will get a free copy of Your Digital Life 2.0, the book. You also get a free workbook and you get access to all the slides that are used in the course. It is incredible value. I want to see you in that course. If you are serious about becoming productivity, then please join me in Your Digital Life 2.0, the 2019 edition. Thank you very much for watching this video.